Uh, today we are uh, ha very happy to have uh, Professor Fa Wenzhe uh, from Peking University um, to talk about his results on the on the uh, um, I would say radar, right? Pe ground penetrating radar, uh, microwave radar uh, measurements of the regolith um, structures uh, on the site of the Tower Free landing site. Uh, Mr. Fa, please. Thank you, uh, per Professor Yet. Uh, so, uh, my name is Wen Fa from Peking University. My topic today is uh, subsurface structure of the moon at China's Chang'e 3 landing site, as seen by the lunar, penetra lunar penetrating radar. So here is an outline of my talk. I will first give a, a background introduction, and then I will show the geology of the uh, Chang'e 3 landing site. And then I will show the uh, lunar penetrating radar observation results and the interpretation and then the conclusions. So this finger shows the uh, uh, shallow subsurface structure of the moon inferred from based on the observation of Apollo uh, seismic experiment. So what we can see here is a, a, a regolith layer, a surface regolith layer, and then followed by uh, ejecta layer with many large rocks and then uh, with uh, disturbed uh, crust and a fractured uh, crust. So this thing, uh, figure show, uh, actually is very uh, idealized uh, subsurface structure. And uh, so the subsurface structure of the moon might uh, probably vary uh, from side to side. So most uh, of our information about the moon rely on uh, remote sensing observation because most uh, remote sensing observation for uh, their signals can only penetrate very shallow, like less than uh, uh, one meter. So actually, we do not know too much about the subsurface structure of the moon. So, so that's why uh, I, I emphasize that this uh, is an idealized subsurface structure of the moon. But what I am going to talk is a subsurface uh, structure that can be observed directly from the ground penetrating radar. So if we look at the uh, up uh, several meter of the, uh, uh, this figure, we, we will see the, the regolith. So previous study have, uh, previous studies have shown that almost the entire lunar surface is covered by a fine green uh, material we, uh, we, we call the lunar regolith as evident by the footprint of uh, Apollo asteroids. So the regolith uh, consists of uh, crystalline rock fragment, mineral flat fragments, features, uh, and glasses. So uh, the, the regolith uh, results from continuous uh, impact of large and small meteoroids with the lunar surface. And uh, it is very uh, important for several reasons. So, so first, regolith is almost, uh, all the uh, regolith is a source of information about the moon. For example, most of the remote sensing signals uh, comes from the uh, lunar regolith. And for the uh, landing missions and the in situ surface uh, uh, experiment, and they were conducted on the surface all within the regolith. And even uh, for the lunar uh, sample collected by the uh, Apollo lunar and uh, China's Chang'e mission, uh, all the uh, uh, lunar samples uh, were from the, the regolith. So, so that's why uh, we, we can say that regolith is the source of information about the moon. And uh, the second reason is that the regolith almost preserve information beyond the moon, like the solar wind and the uh, cosmic rain. Uh, and uh, in, in future, if we are going to build a, a 
lunar base, so regularly is, is uh, there be the raw materials for, for future lunar base. Uh, for these reasons, uh, we, we can say that the, the lunar regularly is, is very important for both scientific and engineering values. So, so our current knowledge about uh, lunar regularly depend on mostly on remote sensing observation and a, a laboratory analysis of the retained samples. So, so, <clears throat> so we know that from 2007, China started uh, its lunar uh, program and uh, uh, up to now there are uh, already five uh, successful uh, missions. So for for uh, Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2, uh, they were in 2007 and 2010, they are orbiters. So and in Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2, there is a microwave radiometer. And uh, uh, its objective is, is to study the uh, regular synchronous. Uh, in China's Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 mission, which were in 2013 and 2019, there was a lander and a rover, and there, there, there was a ground penetrating radar, and it is used to study the regular structure. And on China's Chang'e 5 uh, sample retain mission, which was uh, last year, and there's also a ground penetrating radar to study the regular uh, structure. So for, for these reasons, so regular structure is one of the major scientific objectives for, for China's Chang'e lunar mission. So today I'm going to talk about the regular structure and seen by the ground penetration radar on China's Chang'e 3 mission. So, so here is a Chang'e 3 mission. So the Chang'e 3 mission landed on the moon on December 14th, 2013. The landing site is within the northern Maria Embrim, and there is a lander, and there is a rover. And there are uh, uh, eight uh, instruments on the uh, lander and a rover. Uh, and uh, on the lander, there are uh, two cameras. They, they are uh, used to help for the landing processes. And there's also uh, a, a extreme ultraviolet camera and a telescope. They were used to study the Earth's plasma sphere and for astronomic observations. And there are also like two uh, panoramic uh, cameras and uh, uh, an image spectrometer uh, to study the local geology and uh, 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 surface composition. And then there is a lunar penetration uh, radar to study the subsurface structure of the lunar regolith. So here uh, uh, is a, a Chang'e 3 landing site. So the Chang'e 3 landing site is actually in the northern uh, Maria Embrim. It, it, it is here uh, uh, as indicated by the white arrow. So the landing site is actually within a uh, uh, eratosthenia aged geologic unit. It's, it's uh, here and uh, in uh, uh, a geologic unit named I-22. And it, uh, it's here in the blank region. And the surface age is about 2.96 billion years uh, old, based on the uh, uh, crater densities by Hasinger. And uh, north of uh, the landing site, it is a bright uh, geologic unit, uh, unit and uh, uh, it's R5. The surface age is 3.5 billion years uh, old. And on the right, this finger shows a, a climate in ultraviolet uh, visible a color ratio image. Here is the Chang'e 3 landing site. Uh, we, we can see clear that the Chang'e 3 landing site, the unit is, is very blue, which means it's, it's younger and the titania ab uh, and the FEO abundance is, is, is higher. And also it is uh, it's 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 very red for the I 
five units. So it's, it's older and the titanium abundance is, is, uh, is lower. So th this is a local uh, geology. If we zoom in the landing site, what we can see is here, th uh, this figure. So the landing site, uh, the Chang'e 3 landing site is, is, uh, is here. We can see that the, the landing site is actually 50 meters uh, near the east rim of an uh, impact crater. The, the name of the impact crater is uh, Zwei. And, uh, and if we zoom in uh, this region, we can see the very detail of the landing site. So, so here the, the bright dot is the Chang'e 3 lander, and uh, then the, uh, this dot is uh, uh, the rover, and this shows the uh, uh, Chang'e 3 or uh, 3 crunch. So, so we have high resolution optic image and uh, uh, lunar topography data, so we can study the uh, uh, morphology. So from uh, this high resolution uh, uh, data set, uh, the diameter of the uh, Zwei crater is measured as 500 meters, and its depth is 50 meters, and the inner wall slope is 18 degrees. And we can see that there are a few rocks uh, within the crater rim here. Like there, there are a few rocks, and the size is about several meters. And uh, but there are abundant rocks inside the crater rim. So these two fingers show the uh, two optic images obtained by the para, uh, panoramic uh, uh, cameras uh, by Chang'e 3 rover. And we can see that inside of the impact crater rim, there are so many rocks and the size of rocks, these rocks uh, is about uh, tens of uh, centimeters. So, so now we know the morphology of uh, the wave crunchers, uh, uh, like its diameter, its depth, and uh, uh, surface rocks and the inner wall slope, we can estimate uh, its age. So, uh, so the method we used, uh, we used here to estimate the age of the weak crunter is based on the crunter morphology prominence uh, proposed by Professor Basilski. So uh, it uh, rely on the evolution of uh, impact crunchers. For example, uh, when uh, there is a fresh impact crunchers, uh, its rim is, is very sharp, and there are surface rocks around its rim, and uh, the inner wall slope is usually as large as uh, uh, 30, and uh, the, the rim is very sharp. So as a cruncher uh, degrees, uh, so the surface rocks disappears, and uh, its, its diameter increases, and uh, it's, uh, it becomes shallower. So, so with uh, uh, evolution uh, of impact crunchers, its morphology changes. So, so we can estimate the uh, age of the impact crunchers. So Professor Basilski also proposed, uh, also de uh, divided the evolution stage into five stages, like A, A, B, 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 C, and C. So this is very young and this is very old. It's just before it, it disappears. So he also uh, proposed the evolution order, like the, the, the uh, duration of each stage for the lifetime of each impact crunchers. And, uh, and also the, uh, the lifetime of, uh, of an impact cruncher uh, is a function of its uh, diameter, like here is the relation between the lifetime of the cruncher diameter. So with this relation and the cruncher morphology, we can estimate the age. So for based on the surface rock and the inner wall slope and the uh, uh, diameter and its depth diameter ratio, uh, uh, we classify the weak crunter as morphology uh, B, and uh, because its diameter is 
500 meter. So we estimate its age as 100 uh, million years old. So uh, from the uh, viewpoint of lunar evolution, so three crater is, is very young and with the surface age is about roughly 100 million years old. So uh, this is the age of three crater. So next we want to quantify the regular thickness over the uh, Chang'e 3 landing site. So high resolution optic images um, show that for small fresh uh, crunchers, they usually process uh, four uh, morphology types like a bowl shaped uh, type and then a center mound uh, uh, cruncher and then flat bottom cruncher and a concentric crunchers. So ob uh, Quad and Oberbeck, they conducted a very uh, extensive laboratory uh, experiment by impacting a projectile on a two-layer uh, target, like a, 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 a porous sand layer on top a uh, bedrock. So they can produce these four types of impact craters in the laboratory. And they found that the morphology of impact crunchers depend uh, mainly on the regular thickness D. So if we know the diameter of impact crunchers and if we know its morphology type, we can estimate the regular thickness uh, based on the uh, laboratory measurement uh, relationship. So here I, I show the uh, relationship between the regular thickness and uh, uh, crunch diameter for the four types of impact crunchers. So these are the uh, uh, relationships. So for the Chang'e 3 landing site, we, we counted uh, uh, 1,557 small fresh crunchers in the Chang'e 3 landing site at, uh, in this finger. So here is the Chang'e 3. Uh, landing site. So, in total, there are more than a hundred, uh, more than uh, eleven hundred normal impact crunchers, and uh, more than three hundred flat bottom crunchers, and uh, uh, about thirty-four concentric crunchers. So, uh, with the counted cruncher, we can obtain the relative distribution of uh, these three types of impact crunchers. What we can see here, so for normal crunchers, the diameter is usually uh, for small diameter, uh, normal impact cruncher dominates the population. And for uh, diameter range from uh, 40 uh, meter to about uh, 70 uh, meters, flat uh, bottom cruncher dominates. And for large impact crunchers, the so concentric uh, uh, cruncher dominate. So from uh, uh, the relative distribution of impact crunchers and the previous relation between regular thickness and the uh, uh, diameter of impact crunchers, we can obtain the cumulative distribution of regular thickness of, of the Chang'e uh, 3 landing site. So here, uh, what we can find is uh, the media regular thickness is about eight meters uh, here. So this is a, a regular thickness. So here uh, is just a short summary of the uh, geology of the Chang'e 3 landing site. So the Chang'e 3 uh, uh, landing site is within uh, uh, geologic units of 2.9 billion years old and the surface regular is about 8 meters and uh, the landing site is actually very close to the east rim of uh, a young, uh, fresh impact crater with an uh, age about 100 uh, million years old. So this is uh, uh, local geology. And uh, our uh, F, uh, ground penetration radar observation, the, the inter interpretation of the uh, GPR observation will uh, depend on the local geology. So here is a Chang'e 3 uh, uh, lunar penetration radar. So, so 
On channel three, uh, uh, lower there are uh, there is a ground penetrating radar called lunar penetrating radar. So this is uh, uh, first. Uh, this is the first time uh, for human being to use the ground uh, uh, penetrating radar beyond the, uh, uh, the Earth. So there are two frequency channels, like 60 megahertz and 500 megahertz. So uh, uh, there are two dipoles here on the rear of the rover. This is a, a tenor of the 60 megahertz uh, a tenor. And uh, on the bottom of the rover here in the green part, it, it is a high frequency channel or tenor. So the objective of the uh, uh, LPI is to study the subsurface structure, like the regular thickness or uh, uh, structure of Mari basalt, and also to study the dielectric property of the, the lunar uh, regolith. So here, with this finger, I, I, I show the principle uh, on how a ground penetrating radar works. So for example, if there are uh, subsurface uh, for a geo uh, geologic uh, cross section like here, if there uh, uh, are subsurface structures with different, for example, geometric uh, uh, structure or dielectric permittivity, and uh, when the ground penetrating radar moves in uh, along the survey line, it sends a uh, radar wave. And then there will be reflection between the interface. By recording the uh, reflection, uh, we can start, we can obtain the cross section of subsurface. So from the radar image, we can study the subsurface structure and uh, the subsurface uh, property like the dielectric permittivity or, or the bug density here. So, so here, uh, uh, is uh, this finger shows the three crunchers and uh, also the uh, channel three lander and the rover. If we zoom in the, uh, this finger, we can see on the right, uh, the, uh, the black curve shows the, uh, the uh, surface traverse of the rover during the two lunar days. So, so, so along the, uh, the so we and I, uh, it's about 110 meters. So along the uh, traverse line, the, the ground penetrating radar works, and uh, uh, there's uh, observations for subsurface structure. So we can see here uh, that there are uh, small uh, impact crunchers here. For example, this is uh, about 18 meters. And for this one, it's about 11 uh, meter. And uh, there are also surface rocks here. So, so for the uh, uh, along the transverse line, there are radar or ground penetrating radar observations. So here, uh, uh, we use the tradition ground penetrating radar uh, data processing method to process uh, the and a composition of geometry spreading and dielectric attenuation, the range of mi migration. So these, uh, these methods are actually very uh, traditional for ground penetrating radar observation on, on Earth. But I want to emphasize here, uh, for uh, in our data processing, I use a uh, dielectric permittivity of 3.0 uh, uh, plus 0.03 uh, for the inner rear part for subsurface material, uh, which is based on the regular composition um, and uh, assume the porosity of 0.45. So with this processing method and parameters, we can obtain the processed ground penetrating radar image. It is here. This is the, the, the finer processed radar image. So. So here for the uh, ground penetrating radar image, the bright 
means a, a stronger radar echo and a, a, a dark means a lower radar echo stream. So, so uh, according to the radar echo streams and the texture of the radar images, we divide the, uh, the images into three uh, uh, regions. Like uh, it's, the first is here, and then the second one here, and then the, the, the third one here. So uh, this is based on the texture and the uh, echo streams. But uh, it is really hard to see anything solely from the radar image. We, we, we need to use optic images and other geophysical me methods to interpret the uh, radar images. But, uh, uh, if we look at uh, in detail the, the very shallow surface, uh, surface of the ground penetrating radar image, we, we get this one. So here, uh, I, uh, we zoom in the fourth meter of the uh, uh, ground penetrating radar image. We can see that there are several layers here, like here, here, like here, for example. The, uh, for within the first meter, there are several layers, and their literal continuity is more than three to five or even ten meters, and their thickness is about like uh, uh, several ten centimeters. So we interpreted uh, uh, these layers as uh, newly formed regolith from surface small fresh crunches. And uh, uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, the first meter is we classified it as uh, a reworked uh, zoo. For example, so so here uh, this is the optic images, and uh, there are several impact craters here. So this impact crater, the diameter is 18 meters. Now we can see that there are rocks uh, excavated from subsurface. And here is another uh, impact crater. The diameter is about 11 meter, and there's no surface drops here. So based on the excavation depth of these impact craters, we can regard that uh, we can infer that there is a surface layer with a thickness about like between one to two meters, and uh, uh, and this is consistent with the ground penetrating radar for the reworked zoo here. And uh, so just as a comparison, in Apollo uh, 12 core tube uh, experiment, there are 10 liters within the first uh, 14 uh, centimeter, like here, there, there are several layers. So, so that's why we interpreted the first meter as a reworked zone, uh, uh, which is a newly formed regolith uh, by recent impact craters. So below the uh, reworked zone, there is a region like here. We, we, we can see that there are, uh, the echo strength is very strong and there are so many irregular uh, reflectors. But if we look at the, the details, we can see that there are many hyperbolic curves, like here, like like uh, this one. Uh, uh, it, it shows here. Here is a hyperbolic curve, and uh, here we, we can see two hyperbolic curves here, and then another one here. And uh, uh, these uh, hyperbolic curves are produced by subsurface rocks, and we interpreted. Uh, 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 th uh, this layer and the ejecta from uh, the wave crunter. So, so I, I will explain in detail why these hyperbolic curves are from uh, subsurface rocks. So, so, so this image is a uh, 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 ground penetrating radar uh, image uh, in laboratory experiment by a visiting professor in our university by Professor Liu. So, so here, the author, they, they put many rocks in a box here. 
and then they uh, they move a ground penetration radar from here to uh, along uh, this line, and here is the uh, uh, the observed ground penetration radar image here, and then. Uh, uh, in the same study, the author also do a numeric simulation by putting many rocks inside a box and then resolve the um, max square equation to obtain the reflection. And here is a simulated radar beam. And uh, the, for, in the simulation, uh, the rock size and, their, uh, and the setting of the box is uh, similar with here. We, we can see here that both the observed ground penetrating radar image and the simulation, they are very similar to the Chang'e 3 radar observation. And it, uh, by, uh, from the comparison, we, we, we can interpret the, uh, this layer as the uh, echo from subsurface rocks. But why, uh, how, how do the, uh, oh, uh, why, uh, what forms the uh, hyperbolic curves in a ground penetrating radar images? So here, uh, I just show an example. For example, uh, if uh, there is a subsurface rocks within the regolith, and here is a survey line along the ground penetrating radar, and here is a, a radar antenna. So as the radar moves along uh, the survey line, the, the range between the radar attainer and the subsurface rocks decrease, like decrease firstly, and reaching to a minimum value when the attainer is on top of the, the target, and then increase again as the radar moves away. This produces a, a hyperbolic curve in the ground penetrating radar, as we see here, like here. Uh, here, so the the shape of the uh, hyperbolic curves depends on the uh, the height of the attainer edge and all the depths of the subsurface rocks and also the dielectric permittivity of regolith material. So 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 this means from the observation we we can estimate the. Uh, uh, dielectric permittivity or lunar regolith. That's one of the uh, scientific objects of Chang'e 3 ground penetrating radar. So the attainer height is known for the Chang'e 3 mission. So there are in total two unknown parameters, which is the depth of rock and the dielectric permittivity. So, so here, the, the shape of a hyperbolic curve is described by the eccentricity of hyperbolic curves. So, so finally, we, we have two, uh, these two relationships. The first is the eccentricity of the dielectric uh, of a hyperbolic curve. It is a, dielect, uh, a function of dielectric permittivity, log depth, and uh, uh, height of tenor. And uh, also uh, here, uh, we, we, with the minimum uh, depth of the rocks, we, we also have a relation like uh, uh, this one. So with these two relationships, we, we can obtain the dielectric permittivity and the dielectric uh, and depth of rocks. So this finger shows how ex uh, eccentricity uh, varies as a function of relative permittivity. Uh, for different uh, uh, rock depths here. So once we obtain the eccentricity, uh, eccentricity of uh, hyperbolic curve, we, uh, we uh, assume the uh, uh, rock depths, we can estimate the relative permittivity. So a previous analysis of Apollo regular sample shows that the, the real part, uh, the dielectric permittivity uh, uh, depends mainly on the bulk density of the regolith. So there are two different uh, uh, analysis results, but uh, showing almost a similar results. So, so here is, uh, is a result. So uh, this shows the 
dielectric permittivity as a function, uh, a, a radius as a function of back density. So for the black dots, they are a polar uh, sample measurement, and the black line is, uh, uh, my, is a regression in my previous study, and uh, the uh, yellow, uh, the, the red line is uh, 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 the regression by carrier. So the, the two results are actually uh, uh, very close. So if we estimate the, the dielectric uh, permittivity from the, the shape of hyperbolic curve, and then we can estimate the bulk density uh, of the regulus. So, so we can obtain the regulus property here. So, so here is a, a, a estimation result for the dielectric permittivity and bulk density. So in the ground penetrating radar images, we in total uh, identified uh, 57 uh, typical hyperbolic curves and uh, with, uh, with their eccentricity uh, in, uh, identified in the uh, radar gram, we, we can estimate the uh, permittivity and the permittivity, uh, the estimated uh, dielectric permittivity varies from about 5.1 to 6.1 with the mean value of 3.2 and the mean uh, bulk density uh, varies from 0.14 to 2.9 uh, with the mean value of 1.85. So here are the estimated uh, uh, dielectric permittivity and bulk density uh, as a function of depth. Uh, what we can see here that Generally, both the dielectric permittivity and bulk density increase with the uh, uh, depth here. So, so here the estimated uh, bulk density actually is the uh, mean bulk density from the surface to a given depth. But in fact, the the bulk density increase the bulk density itself uh, increase from surface to uh, uh, subsurface. Uh, as a function of depth, so uh, so we, we further assume uh, exponent bulk density model like here, the bulk density increase with depth z uh, in this uh, way, like here rho d is the uh, bulk density at depth, and rho s is the surface bulk density, and h is the e folding uh, parameters. So with the uh, Bulk density depth uh, function here, we can obtain the mean bulk density uh, as a function of depth, like uh, this equation. So because we, we already have the uh, mean bulk density values as a function of depth here, we can do a regression like here in, in uh, using uh, uh, this equation. Uh, so, so for the, uh, the black dots are the ground penetrating radar estimation, and the, the black curve is the exponent fitting. From the fitting, we can obtain that the surface bulk density is roughly 0.96 uh, gram per cube centimeters, and the bulk density at depth is about 2.44, and the E folding parameters is about one. Uh, meter here. Here I also show the comparison of uh, the estimated bulk density uh, as a function of depth with the Apollo cold tube experiment. What we can see here is for the uh, first uh, two meters, the bulk density estimated by the ground penetrating radar is smaller than Apollo cold tube uh, uh, samples, but uh, for uh, depths larger than two meters, the bulk density is, is larger here. And this is the first time that we obtain the, we estimate the bulk density at a depth larger than three meters because for Apollo cold tube experiments, the maximum sampling depth is uh, less than uh, three meters. So here for the
no rocks. So, uh, so this cruncher, uh, for this cruncher, the diameter is uh, 11 meter, and there's no surface rocks. And uh, for the larger one, there is uh, uh, surface rocks, which means that there is a, a fine-grained layer with a thickness between one meter and two, uh, one meter and two meters, which is roughly consistent with the E14 uh, factors. So, so here is the estimation of the bulk density. And for the, uh, if we know the uh, bulk density or the uh, uh, radius, and we can also estimate the porosity of the radius. So, uh, previous studies show that the green density of radius is a function of radius composition, meaning the FeO and the TiO2 abundance. So we uh, we obtain the radius composition uh, from the uh, 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 visible near infrared spectrometer here, and then we obtain the green density of the radius. Uh, and with this, we can estimate the surface porosity, which is about 0.72 uh, uh, on the surface and is about 0.3 at a depth of five meters. So, so here is the uh, uh, subsurface parameters we obtain from the ground penetrating radar. And uh, so, uh, so what I just showed is a, a, a property of the uh, ejecta layer. Below the uh, ejecta layer, there is a region. What we can see here is the radar echo strength is 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 uh, is weak, and there is no uh, there's less uh, hyperbolic curve here, and uh, and uh, and the, this region is is very homogeneous, and uh, we we further uh, conducted a range of migration. Like for, for this region, we can see it, it is very homogeneous. So we interpreted uh, uh, this region as the uh, paleoregulus, which is a regulus formed on the geologic unit I-22 before the formation of the wheel crunchers. And, uh, and below the uh, paleoregulus layer, there is uh, the radar echo increase and uh, uh, there are uh, many uh, random uh, 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 echoes here. So we interpret uh, this uh, region as a transition zoo here. I, I will enter uh, through the evolution later. So, so here uh, I, I just intru introduced the subsurface structure and seen by the channel three uh, ground penetrating re radar. So there is a surface shallow layer we, we interpreted as a reverse zone and then ejecta layer and a, a paleoregulus and a transition zone. So, so here is the subsurface structure. So along the uh, channel three transverse line here, like the uh, black curve, uh, what we observed by the ground penetrating radar is the, the cross section is the ground penetrating radar cross section is here, and we we uh, sub uh, we divided the subsurface structure into two zones here. So the first zoo is a reworked zoo with a thickness less than one meters, and there are two to five layers, and uh, and uh, uh, it contains newly formed regulus, uh, lunar regulus, and below the reworked zoo, it uh, in the yellow region, it is an ejecta layer with a thickness of about two to six meters, and there are many buried rocks by the uh, as indicated by the black dots. So uh, that's what we we saw in the radar images. Uh, Hyperbolic curves, and below the 
eject layer, there is a relative homogeneous region and uh, with a thickness about four to 12 meters and uh, the, it is relative hom homogeneous and uh, uh, we interpreted uh, it as a paleoregulus layer. And then there is a transition uh, zone and there are numerous uh, many irregular uh, reflectors here. But below the uh, transition zone, there might be maria basalt, but can't be seen by the ground penetrating radar. So here is a, a ground penetrating radar observation and the interpretation. But, uh, but how uh, this, uh, why the lunar surface form such four layered structures? So here is our uh, interpretation for the evolution of the surface. Just a reminder, the local geology I introduced at the beginning of my talk. So, so we know the local geologic units. So, uh, so here is the evolution here. So about 2.96 billion years ago, the, the Maria Basalt unit I-22 formed. So it's, it's just uh, this region this region, uh, this uh, formed, and then, uh, sorry, and, uh, and there, there is a Mari basalt layer form. And uh, during the next 2.96 billion years, a regulus layer formed, a, a regulus layer and a transition zone formed, like here, the, the regulus uh, uh, layer is formed because of the continuous impacting of the lunar surface by uh, uh, by uh, meteoroids. So because of the impacting, there is also a transition zone with uh, many boulder and rocks here. So that's uh, the lunar surface we inferred about 2.96 billion years ago. So about a hundred million years ago, Chang'e 3 crater or the Zui crater formed here. So because uh, during the formation of the Zui crater, so subsurface rocks uh, were excavated to the surface and there, uh, and uh, the rocks were brought to the surface and uh, it formed uh, an ejecta layer with many boulder or rocks here. And, uh, and uh, the regulus, during the formation of the ejecta layer, the regulus turn uh, into periregulus. And the periregulus is, is relative uniform or homogeneous. So, and during the past 100 million years, the surface rocks in, uh, 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 in the uh, ejecta, uh, broke up and it turns uh, into surface uh, regulus, uh, newly formed regulus, which is a reworked zone. So that's why we observed in the ground penetrating radar images for a layer structure like the reworked zone, the ejecta and the tedia regulus and the transition uh, zone here. So with the regulus layer thickness, uh, ob uh, observed by the ground penetrating radar, we can estimate the regulus growth rate, which is very important for uh, studying the formation of regulus and the evolution of lunar surface. So here for the reworked zoo, the newly formed regulus, so the, the thickness is about 0.5 to one meter and uh, its surface age is 100 million years. So, by dividing these two values, we obtain the regulus growth rate is five to 10 uh, uh, meters per billion year. And uh, for the paleo regulus, here the black curve is what we observed from the Chang'e uh, 3 uh, ground penetrating radar. And the red, uh, red line is uh, estimation from the crunter 
more fluidly. We can see they are very uh, actually match uh, each other, and the thickness uh, uh, is uh, uh, eight meters from quantum morphology method and four to 12 meters from the ground penetrating radar observation. We know that the surface age is 2.96 billion years. So the, the regular growth, uh, growth rate is about 2.7 meters per uh, billion years. And uh, with a variation from 1.4 to 4 million uh, meters per billion years. So uh, this value and this one are actually our uh, estimation. So as a reference, so previous estimation for the Apollo uh, 1190 site, the regular growth rate is only about 1.2 meter, meter per billion years. So our uh, regular, uh, our estimation uh, of regular growth rate is much larger than previous estimation. So, so one reason might be that the space weathering uh, effect on the lunar surface is much faster than we, we thought. So here is a, a conclusion. So, so from the Chang'e 3 ground penetrating radar observation, we obtain four uh, stratific uh, subsurface structure at the, along the Chang'e 3 uh, traverse by like the rework zone, uh, ejecta, pedireglis, and the transition zone. So thickness of the pedireglis at the landing site is consistent with the uh, estimation from the morphology uh, of small impact crunchers. So we also estimated the mean uh, dielectric permittivity, which is about 3.2 uh, and also the bulk density, which is 1.85 gram per uh, cube uh, uh, centimeter. And uh, so, so we obtain the uh, regular properties. And also uh, based on the, uh, our estimation, the regular uh, growth rate is much larger than previous estimation. So to end, this finger shows the uh, uh, subsurface structure of the moon before uh, Chang'e 3. Uh, so so uh, this is uh, uh, the, um, before Chang'e 3. And then here is the, the uh, new view of subsurface from the uh, uh, Chang'e 3 ground penetrating radar observation. So, <clears throat> so uh, in my opinion, ground penetrating radar is uh, is a very powerful tool to obtain subsurface structure of the moon and to obtain its physical properties like bulk density, porosity, and dielectric permittivity. And uh, its interpretation depend should be uh, how, how to, uh, its interpretation should be uh, we should be conducted with the help of other like for example the optic uh, in, uh, Optic images and uh, geophysical method. So, so uh, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Bursafa, for this very clear and detailed presentation on the Chang'e 3 results on this uh, lunar uh, penetrating radar measurements. Uh, anyone in the audience uh, have questions? If you have, please unmute yourself and ask the question. That's my question is that uh, how you have estimated the dietary discontinuity because you have a range of dietary discontinuity from one to six. Uh, do you mean the dielectric permittivity? Hmm, dietary permittivity. Oh, it's, it's, it's here. So, so, uh, so we have so many uh, half body curves here. So, uh, from the ground penetrating radar image, we can obtain the profile of the uh, uh, of each uh, hyperbolic curve. For example, uh, the shape of this one is different from this one. So then, and this gives the uh, uh, simulated uh, uh, hyperbolic curves. Uh, 
uh, with uh, different dielectric permittivity. So from the simulation, we can obtain the relation, uh, uh, obtain the relation between the uh, eccentricity and uh, the dielectric permittivity and also the depth of uh, uh, each rock. So, so, so in, uh, there, there are in total three parameters of uh, on low. One is the attainer height, the other is rock depth, the other, uh, the last is the dielectric permittivity. So for the channel three uh, ground penetration radar, we, uh, the attainer height is 0.27 uh, meters. So this is known. So there, there's uh, actually we, we don't know the rock depth and uh, ex, uh, dielectric permittivity. So then we have two relationships. One is the shape, which is described by the eccentricity here. Uh, and then we, we can know the, the minimum depth of the rock, rocks from the ground penetration radar. So we resolve these uh, two equations and we can obtain the, the depth of rocks and the dielectric permittivity. So that you have shown that uh, dielectric, uh, mean dielectric constant is 3.2. You drive the mean dielectric constant 3.2. It shows that uh, low radar absorption material. But uh, you have uh, you shown that uh, composition is uh, FeO 22.6% plus TiO2 5.2%. It shows that a very high observing radar material. So this is a little bit contradictory because 3.2, uh, it estimated the value of 3.2 is showing that it is in near to the ice or something that ice plus some type of uh, rock mixed material. So this is that uh, I am a little bit uh, uh, asking these things that how this is differentiate, how can you differentiate these things? So Sorry, do, do you mean the dielectric constant the dependence of dielectric constant on the red leaf composition. Right, because 3.2, it means that in the case of Sarad in Mars, uh, Martian data, of Sarad data, uh, at 20 megahertz, it shows that 3.2 is pure ice. Okay, so uh, here you are saying that mean dielectric value is 3.2. So, uh, but your material composition is showing that very high absorbing uh, uh, material. So I want to know how this thing happened. So, so here, uh, for the for the dependence of dielectric constant permittivity on the uh, bulk density and uh, Rayleigh's composition. So, so for example, here, uh, because we have Apollo Rayleigh samples, there are laboratory measurements on the dielectric permittivity. Uh, a regular sample. So from the measurement, we can do a regression and uh, uh, from the regression, we, we found that for the uh, dielectric constant, the real part of what we call the dielectric permittivity, it depends on the bulk density. And for the uh, imaginary, uh, imaginary part uh, of the loss tangent, it depends only on the uh, ammonite abundance, which, which is uh, which can be uh, indicated by the TiO2 abundance. Uh, uh, did did I answer your question? Um, okay, let me say this. You know, Professor uh, uh, Fad, this is a uh, uh, was it was um, a Dr. Lajan, Professor Lajan um, from a physical research lab. Uh, India, Amitabha, who asked the question. Um, I suggest that, um, I, I, I believe that you'll be very happy to talk to him again to, to discuss these questions. And so that uh, I, would, I would suggest you, 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 you to discuss this question offline. And okay. uh, I will send the same Professor uh, uh, Fah's uh, email address to, to, uh, to, to Professor Mish, Mish, um, Mishra, so that uh, you, you, Dr. Rajan could get in contact with Professor Bob. Is that okay? Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's I think fine. that, that I mean, the, I'm happy that you two get into contact and to discuss this question because uh, Dr. Rajan is yeah. thinking about uh, doing the same thing on Mars, am I correct? So he's worried about the eyes, you know, eyes, um, 
composition. But this is very nice, um, and you're very welcome. Um, thank you. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, the thank time's you. getting late, uh, so suppose uh, so we uh, close the session for now, and then the, and then we'll come back uh, again. You know, uh, and just uh, to tell everybody that the March 11th we have another uh, seminar like this. Um, we have also uh, six uh, speakers, and uh, you're all welcome. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you, bye. Thank you.